Business Brain, episode 480 for Casual Friday, September 1st, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a topic or a few topics, we dig into them, we dissect them, we analyze them so that we can tune our business brains together and keep on living those charmed lives that we always love. Sponsors for this episode include Zinch, which is, oh, easy for me to say, Zinch, which is a direct lender that makes financing fast and simple. They are waiving their $250 application fee for you because you're a business brain listener at financingthatworks.com. And Miro, which is this awesome visual platform to connect and collaborate. And your first three Miro boards are free forever. When you sign up at Miro.com slash podcast, we'll talk in depth about both of those in a little bit for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in sunny California, I'm Shannon Jean. Yeah. Uh, going to any concerts lately, Shannon? <laughs> I have actually. So I, I have a, uh, an interesting story and observation about a concert I went to. Uh, okay. Last weekend. So we have these uh, lawn season passes at our local uh, ah. amphitheater. Couple, yep. Yeah, it's great. It's, you know, a couple hundred bucks and you get to go to just about every show during the summer. And what I really like about it is you go to shows that you normally would not buy sure. tickets to, right? Yeah, and, of course. And so my wife and I and and uh, her brother and his wife, we, we often go and there's a few other people we know. So last weekend was the Snoop Dogg High School Reunion Tour. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I thought, well, we have to go to this, right? Yeah, uh, and sure. Not that I'm, I, I could tell you any Snoop Dogg songs, although I know some of the melody and sure. I know some of the stories behind a few of them. I said, we got to go to this. This will be, this will be fascinating. Yeah. And so we, we, we went and it was an, uh, uh, it was an incredible experience in the, in many ways. And the one thing that st- stood out to me was the group of guys that was like, too short and Warren G and Wiz Khalifa and a couple of local guys, they were, uh, or they have monetized their stories, the storytelling concept of, you know, some pretty rough stories uh, yeah, yeah, right. coming up in, right. in, you know, out of not great areas and, and making it and, you know, this kind of stuff. And as I watched these, uh, and listened to these guys come out and do this stuff, I just saw everybody eating it up and, you know, this huge crowd of people that were lots. And here I thought I was, I, I was not the oldest person there, right. which is off, often the case. And, and the demographic was vastly mixed, which was, you know, fascinating too. And, uh, these people, it, it's a story of, you know, getting out of these bad experiences and and thriving and succeeding and now we're going to talk about it and how we did it and why you know there's a lot of yeah. bravado in in those songs how I'm the best and this kind of thing and you know you could you can jump on Twitter and see similar conversations about people that I've made it I started businesses now I'm coaching or I'll sure. help you be a creator um, but it just got back it just really hit me you know we've I've talked about this for years on the shows the power of that story and of and even if you haven't written all of yours yet, and none of us have, but how do you want that story to be told? And how do you want it to, what do you want it to look like at the beginning, the middle and the end? Uh, it's, you get to make that decision, which is a hugely powerful thing. And these guys have done it and they did a great job. There was a lot of commerce going on. I did a breakdown on the, the business of Snoop up on uh, oh, yeah, Twitter man. And uh, you can go up there. Millions of dollars passed through that venue uh, that night. And uh, so I broke it down. Whether I'm right or wrong, if you know the concert business, go up and tell me what I got right or wrong. No, it it is fascinating. Well, because, you know, music artists are not, there's not nearly as much money in selling your recordings as there used to be, right? I mean, that's just a a fact of life now that we're in the the digital age, right? You don't have to package it up as a a 10 song record anymore, right? right? You know, it used to be that was the most efficient way to get it out. It was also an industry that sort of controlled itself and was able to, to like 
soak money out of it, the consumers and <laughs> and now the consumers <laughs> sort of drive that industry right like yeah. it, it was it was consumer hostile for a while i would say i know there's a yes. lot of nostalgia there we miss holding uh, you know the the record albums f- forget about sure. the argument about whether it sounds better or not i'm not going to get into that right now if you think it sounds better to you then it does like that that's yes. fine <laughs> but but the cuz the, the co- you know cognitive bias is totally fine when it comes to th- something subjective like audio quality um you're wrong but it's fine uh but you know holding the the album sleeve and and getting the liner notes and all of that like there there's definitely I mean, there was an enjoyment of that. You could yeah, immerse yourself right. in it. Experience. Yeah. yeah. And and there's also nostalgia in that. A lot of that is lost now. And and so p- parts of it were certainly consumer friendly. But in general, it was consumer hostile. It was like, you know, we're going to sell you on the, the hit single on the radio and make you buy that plus 10 other songs in order yes. to to have it at home. And uh, and so in that that revenue stream was lost. Others now make up for it with, you know, T-shirts costing a fortune and the oh, whole yeah. merchandising and even concert tickets are way more expensive even compared to inflation than they used to be. And it's for that same reason. It's like, well, you know, yeah, the records absolutely. used to pay for the tour. Now it's the other way around. Other way around. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. check it out. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll link it in the show notes. But if you go to Twitter or X, it's just, just my name, Shannon Jean. And uh, you can take a look at the breakdown on the mo- on the money and, and give me some feedback. I'd love some uh, comments on that. All right. Look, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Miro. Listen, at first glance, this might seem like just a simple digital whiteboard, but Miro's capabilities run far beyond that. It's a visual collaboration tool where the whole team can build on one another's ideas and create something innovative together from anywhere. This whole shift that we've done to distributed work has broken many old and existing processes, right? Well, Miro, our sponsor, gives your entire organization a way to replicate in-person meetings no matter where you're working and all those rituals to drive your business forward. You can shorten time to launch so your customers get what they need faster. With Miro, you need only one tool to see your vision come to life. Planning, researching, brainstorming, designing, and feedback cycles. It can all happen across teams in Miro. So you can hop into a board, check progress, leave feedback, or even contribute at any time. This speeds up input, and that means you're speeding up outcomes, and you get to cut out any confusion on who needs to do what by mapping out all those processes, roles, and timelines. That's a super important thing. We talk about that here all the time. Your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up today at Miro.com slash podcast. So you really want to go and take a look at this. You get to view and share the big picture overview in a cinch because when everyone has a voice, everyone can tap into a single source of truth and this keeps everybody engaged. So again, your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. Sign up today at Miro.com slash podcast and our thanks to Miro for sponsoring this episode. Next up is our sponsor, Zinch. Look, if you own a small business, you know that unexpected costs can arise at any time. But Zinch understands that the unexpected is actually expected and happens when you're running a business. So why wait around for a sudden impact to your business? Check out Zinch today to see how you can become prepared and stay prepared. And this is because Zinch is a direct lender tailored to small and medium-sized businesses that makes loans simple, fast, and flexible. And Zinch can approve up to $250,000 in under two days. When you partner with Zinch, you won't have to wait months for a traditional bank loan, right? You've got different expenses that come up. The cost from expanding your workforce to some problem that, like, destroys your technology. Maybe you need to get a new computer because of a lightning strike like I did, right? Zinch can help you with what you need when you need it. Their specialists work with you to help you choose the best solutions for your needs. And there are no commissions or third-party approvals. So Zinch can give you better rates, faster approvals, and keep your info secure. Don't wait for an emergency. Apply today with Zinch for a limited time. Look, Zinch is waiving application fees for everyone that listens to Business Brain here. That's a $250 value for just minutes of your time. So go straight to this special URL, financingthatworks.com. Again, that's financingthatworks.com. 
www.lenderworks.com. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. And our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. Shannon, I mentioned that I was at Podcast Movement in Denver uh, last week. Now That's right. Yep. Um, now, I have been podcasting for over 18 years, right? Uh, in, in many people's estimation, uh, you know, I'm one of the OG podcasters. That's what, that's what I get called sometimes. I don't, I've never seen myself that way. I understand that from like logically from a time span, uh, you, you know, view, I, I, that, that is correct, right? It's just, just a fact of, of the industry, but I know a lot of people who started before me. Right. I mean, I, okay. you know, I wasn't the first by any stretch yeah, yeah, of the yeah. imagination. You know, I was in the first year barely, but th- that's about as, as much as I can lay claim to. Right. You know, and yeah. um, so but, you know, I, I come to these shows and when I walk in the door, even when I'm on my way there, when I'm planning my trip there, I feel like an imposter sometimes uh, often. And and it's, it, you know, yes, I was there at the beginning. But the industry has grown around and in in some ways past me, right? There there are companies doing things that I never even dreamed about doing in podcasting and and you know, business being created and sold and and values being created that that I'm just not participating in. And and so like and then and there are people who are much podcasters who are much more well known than me despite them being you know, quote unquote, newer to the scene. Right. And, okay. and okay. all of those things are okay. Like it's fine. In fact, I, I often say that I love going to the, uh, for the education side of these conferences. I love going to the podcasting one oh one sessions because you know, the person that's, that's the expert there, they've been podcasting three or four years. They're teaching a bunch of beginners. It's entirely likely that I'm the person in the room who's been doing this the longest by far. But I always learn something because I yeah. have habits, right? That I've and, developed. And things change, yeah. And things have changed. And so people that started in the last five years don't bring any of the baggage, the tech baggage or habitual baggage that I have, right? So I can always learn stuff. And, and it, that part of it's great. But I am always, I never trust myself when I'm going into these things to be like, okay, yep, I, I you know, I, I'm an industry veteran. I've seen some things. I can. I, you know, I have a perspective that matters. I, I, I have not in a number of years, I have not pitched to speak at these events. And I, I, that is something that I certainly could do. People value my opinion, but I, I just have this imposter syndrome. And, and then after I get there, after a day of meetings with both new people and, and people I know, but more importantly, new people, I realized that I do belong there. Right. And, and people yes, are like, Oh, yeah. this is amazing. Like, it's so great to see you. I get wind up getting introduced as here's Dave, one of the OG podcasters. You should You're learn that from guy. him. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm that guy. Yeah, exactly. I like Jeff it. was talking about it. Wednesday, <laughs> but I like, I, but I don't, it takes getting there and sort of being throwing myself into it against, you know, all of my better judgment <laughs> to, well, to get there. So I like, yeah, I don't know what to do about this. So uh, my, my, I have a lot to say about this because yeah. I have similar feelings and stuff like this happens to me frequently. Sure. Number one is, uh, and as I told you in Slack, I, I don't know that it's a bad thing. I think it could be uh, that imposter syndrome can kind of motivate you to keep striving to do better, to keep your name relevant. and That's um, fair. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think there's a part of that, and and yeah, whether I'm rationalizing, no, it, certainly I don't know. if I go into this and and think, well, I, I've been doing yeah, this 18 I'm, years, yes, you, yes. I deserve your respect, like that. Yes, that's yeah. that it's I know isn't good. true, right? And and Correct. also is is really bad, but but I don't know that the level at which I I believe you can't this, let it be de- debilitating, right? Yeah, yeah well, you and the fact, right. like, and it's not like I get there and I shake in my room, like, oh my gosh, I can't go out and do this. Like, that would be right. bad. And and if there are people like that, like, I, I hope that they can get past that for sure. It's more yeah. that I, like, I definitely, it would be good for business if I were to be speaking at these things. And I just have, have stopped yeah. submitting. Now, I was also told in actually in, in very specific terms, you know, I, I submitted to speak at, at a few of these a number of years ago and I was told in, in very specific terms, well, you are a older white male 
So we, you are therefore going to be, you know, uh, you're, you're, someone else is going to be chosen above you that is not older, white, that's a, and that's male. That's a whole different episode, it, right there. It, it is, uh, but it, but it but was yeah, like I, I, get I get it. it. Like they, yeah. they need to show diversity on their panels. Yeah, of course. It's like, well, but I do have things to say, and yeah. the reason yeah. I have things to say is because I was there in the beginning, and just as a byproduct of how things were, most of us that were there in the beginning were are now yes. older yeah. and we've always been white and male. So yeah. I, you know, it's just like, but, but I think that's part of why I don't submit, but it's not the only reason I haven't submitted. Like I really just need to do this and take my lumps. If they don't take yeah. a session, I submit, well, I'll just try again. Like just keep going. That's right. Until they yeah. can't, until they can't ignore me. Yeah. 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 And so I think it's, uh, I think it's good to be self-aware. You have that humility. Um, and, I, I think it's a, such a common thing. You know, it's funny because about the same time you posted that, you know, and I've been talking about trying to grow my presence on Twitter and build yeah. this, you know, personal brand. And I really feel it there. And I, and I, I but I, I posted this, uh, you know, the other day I said, wow, my, my typical thought process here, you know, I started, I've started six business, six businesses. I've sold like three of them. I've got all kinds of good stuff to share. And then, I, I keep looking at everybody else in a half hour. I'm just like, man, these guys are killing it. Nobody wants to hear from me. I don't, I, you know, what, right, what, what right. can I, yeah, what, I what value do I have here? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then, yeah. and then a half hour later, I get a bunch of followers. I get some good responses and I'm like, okay, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. It, and this is I an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all within like 60 minutes. And, yeah. um, I don't have a, a solution. You know, I, I try to pump myself up a lot, you know, being able to manage your ego is, a really uh, good framework to have uh, taking it up and taking it down, and taking it down. Think, yes. Using yeah, it as really a tool. Important. Yeah. Not yeah, letting it, it run you. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You got it. So it's, it's tough. And, and uh, you know, there's these, I've been seeing these graphics where, you know, if you focus on the day by day, you know, it's just up and down and up and down, but over time, it's like the stock market, you know, it does trend upward it's the key is to keep going and keep doing it uh, and to find support wherever you can. You know, like I know you posted to me in Slack and I responded right away and then yeah. we're talking about on the show. So collaboration with other people, I think, really helps you get over this stuff and being authentic and, and building in public, they call it on Twitter. Yeah, well, I, that's I what I'm doing right here. Here yeah. we are. Yep. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> you know, and, and, and also admitting you're like, well, I don't know, you know, tell me. And, and I think, we try to do that here and it's like, Hey, you know, send us your feedback at feedback to businessbrain.show to tell us, did we get this right? Did, are we wrong? You know, what are we missing about this topic or whatever? Yeah. That, that's critically important to, uh, helping get through imposter syndrome. Cause if you sit in your bubble and listen to your inner judge, you can convince yourself of just about anything. Good and, and bad. To, yes. 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 So you have to bust out of that. Um, I, I'll leave you with one quick story. You know, I love Beck, the, the yeah. music the artist. And he has this song called Loser. And he says this phrase that I just cannot say. And it says, you know, uh, instead, and I changed the word from I'm to your. So when I sing that song, and he comes to that phrase, which is a great phrase. I say, you're a loser, baby. Oh, interesting. I could never say the word I'm. I just can't. I can't let that come into my head. Yeah. And so for years, I've just, you know, that song is, I don't know, 20 yeah. years old. Well, and, 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 and I, the Beatles, the Beatles have a song that has exactly that same phrase as its title. So uh, yeah, with, with yeah, the word yeah. I'm. So yeah, exactly. No way. Can I think like that? Yeah. And so, you, you know, you get to change however you think of these things and all that stuff. And, and, uh, but we'd love to hear about your stories of imposter syndrome. Tell us, you know, uh, how you've overcome it, or maybe you don't have it. And, maybe, and yeah, maybe you, we're the only ones. <laughs> I doubt it. I but, doubt it. Yeah. But, uh, feedback at businessbrain.show and get entered to win a MacBook when you, uh, send in your email. Yeah, absolutely. Like he said, feedback at businessbrain.show. Check out Zinch at financingthatworks.com. And also Miro.com slash podcast. Keep living that charmed life. Have a great weekend and uh, have a great long weekend in the U.S. And we'll see you next week.